Folks, prepare to be shocked. You will not believe what is coming. Number one, we just had the fifth U.S. bank collapse of 2023 a couple days ago alongside deposit freezes and outright bank system failures at major institutions. And quite frankly, this is poised to get way, way worse. Number two, and more importantly, perhaps for your protection purposes, well, a former investment bank vice president just disclosed a blacklist of around 110 U.S. banks. If your bank is on this list, you may be in trouble real soon, so you should definitely pay attention to this. Number three, and lastly, we got to give you the latest on the Israel-Gaza conflict and how it is already affecting the global economy and markets. We'll give an overview on trade ideas to prepare for the next step. And with the Netanyahu pronouncement today, I think you're going to see a lot of volatility in the coming days and certainly over the coming weeks. So let's go ahead and get right to work. And if you appreciate this video, the only thing that we ask in return is that you hit that subscribe button and perhaps share it with a friend. Okay, folks, so over the next few weeks, you're going to hear more and more fuss and then outright panic about this banking system sector. It's like early 2023 all over again, and it's already beginning. Don't just take my word for it. Take the headlines over the last couple of weeks. They're already starting to prepare you for a broader trend of panic. With report after report of banks suddenly closing customer accounts, industry-wide deposit delays, which many of you have experienced yourselves. These have hit banks like Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo, Truist, and others. My personal bank account was actually hit as well by this. At least I got a notification. And then with all of this, we also just had the most recent bank collapse, which happened happened about yesterday. And these are all symptoms of a much bigger and underlying problem. In fact, bigger picture, the CEO of the strongest and most powerful bank in the world, besides the Federal Reserve, while well, Chase's Jamie Dimon just recently warned that the conflicts in Ukraine and the Middle East are creating the most dangerous time the world has seen in decades. But let's back up for a second and talk context here. So bank failures have been a huge theme of 2023, especially earlier in 2023, with some of the biggest bank failures in U.S. history happening happening this year, largely because banks overly lent out at low rates to fair weather, easy money dependent businesses acquired deposits and invested them in low yielding bonds. And then as rates went up, all of these things got destroyed. But the contagion that we saw earlier this year was largely stopped by the Fed intervening with mass amounts of emergency liquidity given to any bank who needed it. However, now yet another bank just collapsed and the FDIC has taken over its fifth bank of 2023. And that of course is Citizens Bank, if you haven't already heard about this. From the Des Moines Register, for Citizens Bank, a 94-year-old establishment of Sac City, has closed after significant out-of-state loan losses, according to a news release from the Federal Deposit Insurance Corp. Now, this is a small bank. They only have about $65 million in assets. It's a small Iowa bank in a small Iowa town, and quite frankly, even though no other bank has collapsed in Iowa since 2011. Well, the fact of the matter is that this is a very, very small bank and it's not systemically or systematically, I think systemically is the word here actually, important. However, while this bank is unlikely to turn into a bigger contagion, well, the truth is that this bank collapse is a symptom of a much, much bigger problem that we are seeing in the banking sector right now. Quote, examiners found significant loan losses previously unidentified by Citizens Bank. The bank had a concentration of out-of-territory and out-of-state loans to a specific industry and were hit with heavy losses on some loans, according to the release. What specific industry is this? Well, trucking. And this reveals two problems. Number one, an oversight problem at many small and medium-sized banks in America. And also number two, an overexposure to certain sectors problem. And as many of these sectors and specific industries and niches start to collapse in this economy, as we've already seen with trucking, well, that's going to cause a lot of problems for banks who have overly lent to them. As everyone in and associated with the trucking industry knows most of the last two years have been very difficult ones for the industry. Trucking companies, large and small, have gone out of business. There are too many trucks chasing too little freight. Rates on most lanes are at or below 2019 levels. Another bad year for the industry. Now, here's the thing, folks. You're seeing this in bank after bank after bank. Little banks that have lent to one specific industry and that industry goes kaput, what happens to the bank? They also start going kaput. And as you see more and more industries suffer, you're going to see more and more banks suffer and more and more weakening of this banking sector. Now, if you read between the lines and you follow this news, you'll notice that banks right now are trying to de-risk in new, creative, but very, very costly ways. From the Wall Street Journal, quote, U.S. banks have found a new way to unload risk as they scramble to adapt to tighter regulations and rising interest rates. So... How are they unloading their garbage can risk, you ask? Well, by trying to sell it to hedge funds and other private managers at a massive, massive, massive cost to themselves. They call these synthetic risk transfers, basically saying, I'm going to pay out my rear end so that you can take on the risk. And then those hedge funds probably figure out how to repackage it for another hedge fund and try to make it look better by putting in some other little financial instruments in there. 
but overall you still got the same risk they're just trying to take it off their tables these so-called synthetic risk transfers are expensive for banks but less costly than the alternative banks are willing to pay so much for de-risking right now because they know if they get into that collapsevo region they start collapsing well that's going to be a lot more expensive banks want to get out of risk and they want cash in most of these risk transfers investors pay cash for credit linked notes or credit derivatives issued by the banks the notes and derivatives amount to roughly 10 percent of the loan portfolios being de-risked investors collect interest in exchange for shoulder and losses if borrowers of up to about 10 percent of the pooled loans default so why is this all happening at once charlie charlie tell why now well because folks it's pretty obvious that banks are preparing for a much, much bigger storm and don't want to be sucked into the gates of hell like SVB and First Republic and Signature earlier this year were. But Charlie, wait, are you stupid? Regulators have already figured out how to stop banks from collapsing. I mean, one just collapsed, but hey, other than that one, I mean, these regulations that they implemented are bulletproof. No more collapse EVOs. Well, you see, folks, after the Lehman collapse and then again after the collapses earlier this year, well, you had specific guidelines proposed by Treasury Department senior advisors, and these guidelines, at least, have not been implemented. They implemented a lot after the Lehman days, but these are some clear guidelines that were recommended in the Lehman days and were recommended earlier this year that have not been implemented. Common sense rules like requiring all depository institutions to be insured, member banks restoring separations between between banking and financial and commercial activities. That one seems like a no-brainer, at least putting some form of greater separation, closing the unauthorized banking loophole and the bank powers loophole, or hey, maybe insuring all deposits and requiring banks to pay for that deposit insurance. These are all common sense regulations and rules, rather, that could be applied to the banking sector and de-risk it quite a lot. But of course, hey, maybe that would create too much stability in the markets, right? That's not what the big money wants because they profit off the instability. And that's why you you have to make sure that you're following this stuff and protecting yourself. So that leads us to the next point, which is how do you prepare for this yourself? Well, by screaming and crying. At least that's what I do every single morning. But there's multiple common sense steps that you can take to protect yourself. For example, obviously a no-brainer is keeping each account that you have at a bank under 250k to benefit from the FDIC insurance. But the truth is overall, one of the best ways to protect yourself is just to substantially reduce your exposure to cash. Cash that you don't need for short to medium term arbitrage, is not worth keeping in banks, especially above 250K. The truth is that banking collapse or not, the US dollar has lost some 87% of its value since 1970, 87%. I mean, it'd be much, much better for you just to hold literal garbage than to hold the US dollar. And there's a lot more headwinds to the US dollar in the next five, 10, 15, 20 years than there were in the previous periods. You now have many countries trying to fight against US dollar dominance and repatriating a lot of these dollars back into the United States which quite frankly is going to have a very, very inflationary impact. But another reason that you really want to start watching is because of this digital dollar situation. It's pretty clear to anyone paying attention right now that digital dollars are a project that will eventually become a reality. And in the lead up to that, you're going to see even more reasons to exit the dollar as other people are like, okay, well, I need to start switching into alternative assets so that I'm not screwed before this collapse and before they start recalling the physical dollars, which would be recalled from bank accounts too. The banks might just completely switch you over to the digital dollars. Folks, I totally get it. CBDCs tend to have a lot of conspiracy theorists chiming in, but the truth is that it's pretty clear if you do any sort of research that this is coming eventually. And quite frankly, when it happens, you're going to have these digital dollars that have no privacy, can be turned on and off without even going to a court because it's just going to be the Treasury or the Federal Reserve or a combination thereof deciding which ones work and which ones don't. And you're also going to have a government that has the ability to decide where something is spent and where it's not. Who knows to what level these are going to be implemented, but the fear of that alone in the lead up to that implementation and then the risk of the implementation is enough to be like, you know what, maybe I don't want to be overexposed to one stupid asset class that has already had a very, very bad long track record, which is the US dollar. We don't know how long these projects are going to take to roll out, and it depends a lot on your country here in the United States. I think it's probably going to be three, four, five years, but, but it's pretty easy to see with all of these trends that the dollar is not is not the place to be you don't want to be overexposed to it now i'm no anti-cash extremist in fact you definitely need some cash for short term to medium term arbitrage opportunities for living so on and so forth and you got to keep that somewhere but but when you're keeping it somewhere you got to make sure that each account is under 250k 
and and you want to be very 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 careful with the banks that i'm about to show you that are blacklisted so what are these banks that are blacklisted charlie charlie tuck well tika tawari who was the vice president of one of the largest banking firms in the u.s and who has had a very very successful career in the hedge fund space posted a list of some 110 banks that are considering recalling the u.s dollar for eventual digital dollars and participating in programs to beta test this and according to him these are likely going to be the next systematically risky banks and ones that you want to be very very careful if your money is in i found a link to an updated database from a website called frbservices.org, which I'll link down below if you want to see all the banks that are participating in this. But if you go and you read over the list, now you do have some big dogs on the list like your JP Morgan, Chase, and Bank of America, which in my opinion, those are in the too big for the government to let fail category. So those are fine. But what I would suggest folks is that if you're looking at this list and your money is in a small bank with little assets under management, well, those are going to be much less systemically important for government officials and are going to be basically irrelevant and may be a lot more likely to get railroaded over as we switch over to the digital dollar and a lot of their underlying assets lose value. Something to think about and something that I would take very, very seriously. Make sure to look up your bank with that link. Okay, let's go ahead and talk Middle East. So we are about a month into this horrific Israel and Gaza conflict and thousands upon thousands of people have died and many more have been injured. And at the moment, you have tanks surrounding Gaza City as the battle escalates. You also have thousands and thousands of Gaza civilians moving further south and you can see the route here, presumably moving before more broad invasions by Israel. At the same time, it's long been wondered what Israel's main goal is at the end of this besides killing Hamas. And this is what they said. This is what the PM over there said, quote, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel will take overall security responsibility in Gaza after the war between Israel and the Palestinian militant group Hamas. Now, of course, the many other countries in the Middle East that don't support Israel and or don't recognize it are not going to be happy with this. And that could lead to a massive incentive towards more broad escalation. And that is what you got to be watching right now. You're definitely going to see a lot more news come out about this over the coming days. Now, what do you think is going to happen to global markets? Well, here's an opinion from the Sachs over at Goldman from CNBC, quote, the Israel-Hamas war could have a significant impact on economic growth and inflation in the Eurozone unless energy price pressures remain contained. The ongoing hostilities could affect European economies via lower regional trade, tighter financial conditions, higher energy prices, and lower consumer confidence. So with that, I'd say pay very, very close attention to OVX for oil volatility hedging. I think you're gearing up for the next round there, as well as UVXY for the next panic cycle. Maybe you got another couple of weeks. Now, for those of you who are looking for more individual trade ideas, whether you're talking about specific stocks and catalysts and so on and so forth, well, our latest idea was sent in our free newsletter last night, and that was PW for Power REIT, and PW ran about 54% alert price to highs. We have another idea coming tomorrow night, so make sure to sign up for our free email reports using that first link down below if you want to get that. Anyways, have a good one, folks, and I'll see you in the next video.